hello and welcome to my youtube channel uh, my name is Antonia Karaini and I'm a psychologist by profession if you're new to this channel welcome and if you're a returning subscriber thank you so much for returning so last week we were tackling about dysfunctional families and today is the last day of handling the series about dysfunctional families so today we are going to talk about the various personalities or the family roles in a dysfunctional family so we will find that children take up various family roles in a dysfunctional family so that they can cope with what is going on in their family so that they can cope with the trauma that is going on in their family so that they can be able to adapt to that environment of a dysfunctional family. So uh, stay tuned in and we will learn about the various roles that a child takes in a dysfunctional family. So stay tuned in. roles are quite natural especially in dysfunctional families it's not like it's something that is uncommon or abnormal but they become bad when they start affecting your day-to-day -day lives so you'll find that the children who grow up in a dysfunctional family adapt to a certain role so that they can be able to fit in that family and these are the roles that I'm going to explain and uh, these roles are actually caused by the behavior patterns that are present in a dysfunctional family and this mainly there are five and i will list out and explain five roles that uh, children who grow up in a dysfunctional family take up so number one we have the golden child the hero or the saint the golden child is also known as the hero of the family or the saint of the family. So the, what is this golden child? This is the, a role that a child that grows up in a dysfunctional family grows up, take, takes up. So you will find that the golden child is usually the overachiever in the family. This child strives to achieve excellent academic grades. This child strives to achieve excellent discipline even in school you find that they are excessively disciplined this child is also excessive excessively disciplined in terms of religion the religion that the uh, parent uh, grows up in or the religion that this family is accustomed to so the golden child strives to excel so that Remember we said that the children who grow up in a dysfunctional family, uh, their parents have a, one dysfunction or the other. So this child, the golden child, strives to fill that gap of the parent by becoming what the parent could not become. If, for example, the parent is a drunkard, this child will study hard, become a doctor, so that they can become the opposite of what they see in their parent so this child usually grows up and uh, this is not themselves remember they are just trying to overcome what their parents are going through or are inflicting upon them or they are trying to overcome the environment where they grew up because they are unable because they don't want the same thing happening to them and behind this striving for excellence, the A grades, this child you'll find them getting A's in school, they'll, you'll find them always at the top. And remember, behind this academic excellence, there are very deep feelings of insecurity, very deep feelings of shame, very deep feelings of, you know, this child is trying to cope with this deep seated. Uh, trauma that they went through in their family by 
striving in their academics to become the top, the cream de la cream, you know. So it's actually a coping mechanism for this child. And there's this golden child is also known as the hero of the family because the rest of the family members think that this child is actually the hero. They cannot make any mistake. They cannot, you know, they they get A, A grades. They are never late for schools. They are never reported for cases of indiscipline. So this is actually the golden child. And this golden child is also known as the saint. And the saint is also a golden child in some way. But the saint of the family strives to excel in terms of religion they become overly accustomed to religion they observe every rule that the religion the religion they grew up dictates you know they are trying to it's called they are trying to compensate for the trauma that is present in their families so this child becomes a saint they can do no mistake they are all they are always there in all the prayer meetings they are always there in all the religious meetings they are always there you know in all the worship the child becomes a saint so that they can cope with the problems that are present in their home because you find that many people who are experiencing who are experiencing problems they actually run to religion so this child is unconscious they they are not aware that they are doing this because of the present situation in their family but they are actually compensating for what is lacking in their family the lack the lack of love in their family the lack of affection the chaos the violence in their family they are compensating for this by becoming a saint because they are seek they seek that love from religion they seek l that love from following the prayer groups the prayer meetings but that is why we call this role the golden child the hero or the saint this is the child that is excellent in the family but remember behind this excellence or behind this religion or behind this sainthood there are deep feelings of insecurity, shame, trauma that needs to be dealt with. And uh, if this child realizes that uh, these this actually tendencies are actually going even up to adulthood, they need to seek therapy. And another thing that I will point out about the golden child is these children have very difficult they they face difficulties in establishing relationships in future especially romantic relationships because they are you know even at work they become workaholics and you know you'll find that they are always the first to leave, to enter the office the last to leave the office because they are they have become perfectionists and uh these perfectionists have very difficult time establishing meaningful relationships establishing romantic relationships and you'll find that their social life always has a problem and this is because they grew up in a dysfunctional family and they have not addressed the trauma that was experienced in their childhood they just developed coping mechanisms by taking up a role of the golden child in the family then number the second role that children in a dysfunctional family usually take up is the troublemaker or the scape scapegoat or the black sheep the troublemaker is the same as the scapegoat or the black sheep of the family so we'll find that this child is always the on the wrong this is the child in the family that is always take, taken or sent home for disi in discipline cases. This is the child that is always on the wrong. Wherever they are, even in church, they are the, one, the ones who will be seen making noise in the church. They are always reported home for in discipline cases. But it is not their fault. 
this child takes up this role to get the attention of the parents because probably not in the family they are growing up it is dysfunctional the parents do not care about the ch kids probably they are drunk somewhere probably they are too busy with their lives or too busy with work so when this child is being sent home probably for indiscipline this is getting the attention of the parents so that is why we find that this uh, role being called the role of the troublemaker or the scapegoat or the black sheep of the family because uh, this child is very different from the rest of the family members this child is indisciplined this child is violent you know so this is a role that the child takes up because they want to get the attention of the parent because the family is dysfunctional and they just want to take this role so that they can try to get the attention of the parent you also find this role has the child that is always sick you'll find that in a home there is a child that is always sick always being sent home always being sent to the hospital this is actually a subconscious cause of a dysfunctional family i'm not saying that not all children that are sick actually have this role but there there is that subconscious mind of the child that is making them sick so that they can get the love that they are lacking from the parent they are subconsciously seeking attention and that's why you'll find them actually being sent home because they are sick or they are indisciplined you know so this is another family role this is another role that is played out by kids in a dysfunctional family but actually these kids are actually trying to get the love and the attention that they lack from the family then number three we have the lost child this in every family there is the lost child so this the lost child is the opposite of the golden child this uh, child probably in most cases it's a product of where we have a large family settings so this uh, child is actually lost in real sense the lost child tries to appear as invincible as possible they don't want to be seen they don't want to be heard so this child is most of the time they are watching movies most of the time they are doing their own things and they try as much as possible to not get the attention of the parent they try most of the time to play safe you know because they know in their family obviously it is dysfunctional there are chaos every day there is violence every day nobody cares so this child lies low the lost child actually lies low and try to maintain the sanity of the family as much as possible they don't want to trigger anything so they actually lie low you'll find that this child probably is addicted to social media or they are usually doing their own things and the, the you will find that it is in in most cases this child uh struggles with strong feelings of insecurity loneliness and craving for attention yes i have said that these roles most of the time the the this child the, these uh, roles are taken up subconscious or unconsciously because they don't know that they this child actually don't know that they are the lost child but they will find themselves taking up the role of the lost child they will want to appear as invisible as possible most of the time you'll find them locked in the bedroom you know and when you want to call them there's a certain spot that you will find them but remember behind this role there are deep seated feelings of insecurity loneliness trauma because this child is not getting the love that they require and these family roles actually move even to adulthood find that the this coping mechanism is present also in adulthood you'll find that when this person grows up in the office spaces they don't want to be seen or heard 
you'll just know them when you see them but you'll not hear them at all and this is not a healthy personality because you need to be yourself uh, you'll find that the lost child will have trouble later in life looking or were asking for help or want being helped by other people because they are they are used to being self-sufficient because the parent is not able to give that love to them or to give what they give them what they need so this lost child ends up being self-sufficient and they have trouble asking for help from other people even in future then we have the mascot number four mascot child or the clown of the family so this the mascot is the child that is always happy bubbly they try to lighten up the mood of the family using humor using making jokes cracking jokes the, the mascot struggles to make other people happy overlooking their own happiness they put the happiness of other people first the mascot of the family wants to to lighten the burden that is there in a dysfunctional family so you'll find that most of the time they they actually bend over themselves to please other people they struggle to please other people because they have struggled to please their parents they want to become the savior of the family you know so if that is the mascot so the mascot behind these feelings of uh, behind this mask of happiness joy you'll find them they are always smiling the mascot is struggling with deep feelings of insecurity as i have said and they have difficulty connecting with negative emotions or conflict so they deflect these negative emotions with humor you know there's those people who diffuse a negative situation using humor that is the mascot child but behind this humor behind this smile that is always on their faces are deep feelings of insecurity deep deep seated trauma because in most cases when the parents are violent or not there the most of the times they try to diffuse that situation using humor so they are struggling to make the situation better so that is why they have taken up the role of a mascot or the role of a, of a clown the mascot is also known as the clown then number five we have the peacemaker or the mediator of the family so this child is always found in the middle of the arguments they are always struggling to take sides let's say the parents are arguing or the siblings are arguing they are always caught up in the middle of arguments and they are not able to take sides they are usually struggling to take sides they usually want peace in the family so they are always trying to mediate or they are always trying to bring the warring parties together so that there can be peace in in the family so they always they are always reading the room to see how the is the situation so that they can adjust accordingly because this the peacemaker does not want conflict so they are always ahead trying to see if this situation could cause conflict and resolve it be before it actually leads to a full blown conflict and uh, we will find that the peacemaker is usually uh, exhausted emotionally because you know that trying to read the room trying to solve conflicts that arise in the family trying to take sides you will find that the the peacemaker is always torn torn be torn in between and that is why you'll find them always struggling to make decisions i'll add uh, another two of course i know they have reached five so we've tackled the peacemaker or the mediator we have the mascot then we have the martyr 
let me add another one it's another role that is taken up by dysfunctional family so the matter in the family makes sure that everyone knows that they are sacrificing a lot for the family so you'll find that whenever the matter helps the helps you as a family member you'll end up feeling guilty or wanting to help them back so pay close attention to feelings of guilt whenever a family member helps you that is the matter of the family because they always want to help the family but they always want to make sure that you know that they have helped them and you need to help them back and the matters usually guilt trip the fam the other family members a lot yes they are helping the family by doing them favors doing shopping for them but on the negative side they are guilt tripping them like into thinking that they have helped them so much you know they actually even end up making sarcastic comments that will make the other family members feel like they don't deserve that help so that is a family role that is taken up by those are the family roles that are taken up by children in dysfunctional families and i have as i have said the roles are taken up unconsciously the kids don't realize that they are taking up these roles but it is actually a defense mechanism so that they can adopt to living in this family so if you've identified that you identify with any of these roles that i have said you need to actually change and you in most cases you'll see when you try to change the family fall up falls apart because it is accustomed to these roles but for your own good and for the good of the family that you will create in future you need to actually seek therapy so that this you can be able to cope with such situations in a negative way instead of taking up the roles that are taken up in a dysfunctional family for the example the golden child has no room to be themselves because they are actually like the savior of the family they want to be the exact opposite of their parents you'll find other people saying you know my i grew up in a very poor background that is why i never want my children to grow up in such an a background yes it's actually a good thing but it it should not tamper or interfere with your mental health or interfere with your personality because you are supposed to be yourself authentically without taking up any role to fit a dysfunctional family so you need to develop healthy coping mechanisms to deal with the trauma that is there in that family and when you are able to overcome that trauma you can be yourself without becoming the hero the saint or any other role that is taken up in a dysfunctional family yeah so that is all for today and i guess we are done with the series on dysfunctional families so next week we will do something else remember i always post a video every wednesday at 8 pm so always catch up with me on youtube at that time and if you've not subscribed subscribed hit a like hit the like button and uh press the notification bell if you like this video thank you so much for watching this video and until next week bye